Hello, David. Hello, how are you? Good, how are you? I'm good, I'm good. Did you have a good holiday? Oh yeah, I'm, I'm, <laughs> I'm recovering from food coma. <laughs> <laughs> I hear you. Yeah. <laughs> I'm ready to get back to normal food. Hey, Isabel. Good morning, how are you? Hello, hello Isabel. Hello, Ida, how are you? Good, how are you doing? Hanging in there. Had a great Thanksgiving. How about you all? Uh, I did too, yes. I was just telling David I'm recovering from food coma. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> there was too much to eat and leftovers too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Were you in town? I was at our farm, yes. You know, I, I didn't make it to your farm. The next time you have something, I will make a point of coming. It looks like a beautiful place. Thank you. Um, it's Hi. it's uh, small, Morning. but it's um, very close to downtown, Great. 20 minutes away. So um, as soon as the weather improves, uh -huh. I'd like to have the MIAC back. For, I would for be, I'm in. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Talk about that. Hello, uh, Fabricio. Do you know uh, Dr. Ido Tiano? No, not yet. I see him. How are you? <laughs> I see him last time. I see him last time. But will you make it to the mayor's reception tomorrow? I could meet you there face to face. Are, are you guys going to be there? I will. Yes, I'll I'll see you there tomorrow. <laughs> okay, yeah. Yes. Sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. Good morning. morning. Taking notes here. Isabel, do we need to or Melissa? Is the recording our notes or do we need to take notes? I can I can take notes. I asked uh, Trina Brown to join us. She may not have gotten the the email yet, but I'll take them and then Trina can can help me out if if this I believe it's it's uh, it can be recorded. Yeah, it's it is recorded. being recorded. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. it's already being recorded. I normally take a few notes anyway, just to make it easier. Okay. Well, it is um, 11.02, so let's go ahead. I know people's time is valuable. Um, so um, I'd sent out a kind of a, in, in, in the email that I sent out, kind of some of the things that we want to talk about and discuss today. Um, part of it is the logistics of setting up an ongoing um, meeting. I think there's a lot of things that we discussed at the, at the full meeting, um, some like issues that we need to address um, sooner than later, uh, especially with the refugee population. Um, that's coming in to do. Um, so um, I will uh, go ahead. I don't. I don't think we have to. I don't know if we have to do the logistics of calling a meeting together. But if so, um, I call the 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 meeting um, to a start. Um, one of the things I wanted to discuss is kind of the history and the background because most everybody on here is fairly new uh, to the committee. Um, we have looked at it. We've had variety of different um, avenues of things that we've talked on and that we've worked on. Um, before the world fell apart, before the pandemic, one of the things that we were trying to focus on and, and that we started, and we have somewhat of a, a grasp of, is trying to find out um, what economic development international um, this Fayette County has. Um, that information is not readily available. Um, we've got bits and pieces of it. Um, I'm in the Japanese world, so we we track it, but a lot of a lot of 
um, organizations, the Economic Development in Frankfurt, uh, in Lexington, they don't do a good job of tracking what is the, the international invest in investment. We've had several interns in the past work on this project. Part of the problem that we've occurred is it's really hard to get that data because a, the Secretary of State does not, on business licenses, do not mark if they are foreign owned or foreign invested. Um, and those are some of the things that we kind of look through. We know there's a lot of mom and pop shops um, that have businesses um, that they have come here to establish or they've come here and they've started businesses. So we know that the, the, the startup money or the investment money for that has come from outside of the U.S. or outside of Kentucky, but they are foreign, foreign run. Um, you know, there's a lot of grocery stores, there's a lot of convenience stores, um, especially uh, from the Middle East. Um, we know that a lot of those are, are, are foreign owned. So we've, we've, we've always struggled with trying to get a, a true number. We know that that number is a lot higher than what the council or what the city thinks that is. So um, that's something I'd like for us to, to continue um, to work on as we get back together is to kind of brainstorm of how do, how do, how is the best way that we get that information, you know, and that we can communicate that so that the, um, the mayor and the council members and the districts understand that we have a huge economic impact that's coming from the outside, um, from, from the international community. So that's one area. The other big area that, that I think that's important that, that I think this group wants to start working on, um, but we're flexible, we can go in, in many different directions, is the um, workforce development side. Um, we do have, we know a large international community that need work, um, that are qualified to work, um, but there's, there's been a lot of obstacles um, in the past in regards to that. Um, some of those have been um, language barriers. Um, the other ones have been certification of experiences. So we do know that in, in especially the refugee population or groups that transition over from family groups may be skilled trade workers um, from engineers to nurses to medical that they've accomplished in their countries. But for whatever reason, um, either here in Kentucky, we don't accept their accreditation from those countries or from those universities. Um, so we do know that we've got some very high skilled trained people that are working in um, hotel industry, the horse industry, those types of things. We have one of Kentucky's biggest issues right now that we're working on, on a state level, is the workforce development. We cannot attract new investment, foreign investment, because we don't have the workforce and able to do that. So one of the things I'd like to see this committee do is to find a way that we can plug our international community that need workers into some of these spots. So um, I did get an email from Marilyn, um, who's you guys are know from the committee, um, where we had a discussion about the Kentucky Refugee Ministry. Um, she has she has tracked down for us that the the contact person that that we um, can can work with. Um, she says that she's got people calling, the refugee ministry has people calling every day begging for jobs. And I get calls and emails in my organization every day begging for workers <laughs> that they're desperate all the way around. So what I'd like for us to do is to this committee in the next few weeks to figure out what is the best way to approach and how do we connect these people as we go through? I think that we can work closely with um, that committee that Marilyn works with, the immigration committee, 
um, to identify what um, group of people that we have and start capturing um, and then to find out what visas are that this population already has um, and then figure out what their expertise or what their abilities are and um, to find out for those who need visas, how to get those. Um, I, I went on this weekend on um, um, several websites for job seekers. Um, I looked at Indeed, Monster.com, um, Zip Recruiter, and I was surprised at under the descriptions that it said visa sponsors was yes. In the past, we've not done that or have had companies to do that because of the expense. But now I've seen many of those that have said yes. Um, I've talked to several companies um, because I've got Japanese people that are here, nationals that are here that are wanting to work, but they don't have the visas and our Japanese companies have not sponsored those. But now many of those going into the new budget year is putting that in a line item because they are desperate for help. So um, those are things that we we need to investigate, to look at, to do. Um, so with all of that being said, um, and, and now having um, Kaiser, is that how you say Kaiser, son? I want to say Jeff. Son, I'm used to yeah, it's Kazan. Kazan. Um, of, of, of being able to, you know, I, I appreciate you being able to um, co chair um, and support um, some of these efforts. Um, I don't know if there's anything that, that, that's on your mind or some things um, in regards that, that you think that we should evaluate or approach or look at. Uh as I'm also totally completely new to this committee and the commission, I'm also learning uh, every day with whatever discussion we do. So thanks for the upfront introduction that you gave to the entire, uh, the necessity, what needs to be done. I think you have really raised some good points and uh, even considering the email from Andrew, uh, let's work on the permits, how if we can, in, uh, initiate or maybe we can help them to get the work permit faster because logistic is something, transportation is something that can be worked out with the mayor's interference, with the committee, uh, with the government helping and the companies, the private, whoever wants the workers to work them. There can be a joint solution that can be easily worked out between them. But for work permit, if we can find out a bigger solution, not only for Afghan refugees, but even for any other refugees across any other countries, uh, if you find a proper solution, we can really pull up a huge work force and we can solve a problem to a lot larger extent. At the same time, I think, uh, how about if we can set up a way where we can accumulate all the database, we can take different communities, different countries, and if we can contact them and ask them to share their industries, small businesses information, so that we have a database where we can send out regular information of the workforce that's available for employment. And that way it can, that we can generate a pool and can create a bridge for the employment for them. It will be an exercise, but I think we should start doing that uh, once we have a database, or I don't know if uh, uh, Isabel, she will be better to uh, answer on that. Uh, does the Lexington uh, mayor office has all the information like that? No, no, don't. we don't. And that's been a major problem. This is what David was talking about. That Lexington doesn't collect. Um, they collect license fees. They collect um, all kinds of taxes, but they don't pull out um, the foreign owned um, and they, I, you know, we've been asking, and I think this is a very valid request that could come from the commission 
to um, the mayor and the mayor's office, um, to the, the, the financial uh, divisions, um, because it's something that, that we need to figure out, we need to help them figure out how to collect that information, whether it's just having a box saying, um, you know, what is a polite diplomatic way of saying, is this foreign sourced uh, funding? Is this uh, foreign owned? Um, are you a US, you know, there's so many US citizens that are foreign born. So how exactly are you going to um, recommend that this data be collected? Uh, because it, it is touchy for some people uh, to be asked, you know, are you a foreigner or are you, um, so we need to have something that maybe other cities maybe study uh, what other cities do in order to capture this kind of information. David, what do you suggest? Well, I think, and, and I did make that note here is that, you know, we can look at some of our other cities in Kentucky that, that have a, a, a international population, Louisville, Bowling Green area, and, and, and how they do that. But I think one of the things that we need to do is that we need to gather the story and then I think not only communicate that to our um, um, mayor and the, the leaders of the city, but to figure out we can't meet the needs until we know what those needs are. Um, so I think we've got to we've got to take a step back to figure out. And I think to get that, in, and, and Isabel, I don't know if you have, if we can find the leaders of these people, because everybody has, there's some kind of support group somewhere for a lot of these countries. It's just, if it's the Hispanic community, I know we are for the Japanese community. I know Dr. Kalala knows the, the Congo community um, in different groups of so being able to say, okay, what are the concerns or what are the issues that we have? And then how do we meet that? Um, I know that a big issue right now is transportation. Um, I, I also had a conversation with Toyota, and Toyota is is really working on this. They have got a task force that they have put together. I have had recommended, I've gone to their HR group. They're actually, their community relations group is the one that's kind of taking this and looking at it to see how do we identify the needs um, um, in, in getting, you know, workers here and those types of things. Uh, David, I think you hit on something very important, particularly for the equine industry that I'm a part of. Very short on labor, but the people that are willing to work don't have that transportation, and you have to have transportation to get out to the farms. Um, can, can I take us back a little ways? When, when you said we need the story, one of the things that, that is an overall umbrella in, in the problems that we're facing without that data collection is that during COVID, we had benefits coming out to our restaurants, coming out to our small businesses. And these are taxpayers that weren't finding out that this money was coming from the state and from the federal government and from the local government. And then they keep giving it to agencies like um, uh, Commerce Lexington, who is developing their international contacts, but they're mostly big. And we've, we've said before, the small mom and pop restaurants, et cetera, we've reached out during the COVID pandemic, we reached out, for instance, um, to the Chinese community through uh, Dr. Wang, who mm -hmm. has been a past president of the Chinese Association, the Kentucky Amer uh, American As Chinese Association. So we have some contacts with some of the groups. The Hispanic groups, they're so large. We have 23 different countries here from Latin America alone. They don't all speak Spanish, but um, I sent out feelers to the different cultural groups to see if they could connect us with the business people. Um, and I had nine restaurant owners come. Not a single one of them were aware that there was help during the COVID pandemic for small restaurants. And I, I had to translate the, the uh, application. We went through it at Global X 
you know, we're all wearing masks and we're all there. And that Hispanic group um, was strong economically. One of the gentlemen had three restaurants. Another one had a construction company. Another one had, you know, different, different types of businesses, but they all ended up saying, we need an Hispanic chamber of commerce group so that we know about these things. So the language was there and that was unifying them, even though they were from different countries, but it's still a matter of maybe by language group that we need to pull in those ambassadors. And this is where the outreach committee and the ambassador program will be key to bringing in those people who are leaders in the business community, as well as in, in all other areas, health, et cetera. Don't you think? You okay, I have, yeah, go ahead, I'm sorry. Okay, so uh, just to solve this problem for a longer run, uh, Isabel, you can just help me a little more on the information on this. Like say, for example, on the Global Lex, we have a subscription where we send out regular newsletter and we invite even the common people also to subscribe to it and we share the information. How about if we expand the reach of that subscription and we also invite, we have a special page dedicated to small business owners where they subscribe with their more detailed information and that way we can create a database of all the small businesses across our entire Lexington or the county, whichever the region that we are covering. And we ask certain specific information that can help us to uh, channelize the resources that we have. And then we can help them to grow as well as we can help the refugees to find employment. Like for example, if we have the funds available, any benefits coming, we know the target group to which we have to so once we have that small business plus, uh, we can also have certain more uh, criteria that the small businesses can select in that. Like for example, if they are connected to any organizations, any associations, any chambers of commerce, they are connected to any uh, country or community groups. So that will also help us like how focused the small businesses are and which are more powerful, which needs more attention, which needs more help to grow it will be a lot huge, powerful database that we can develop. It will be an exercise, but I think we should invest into it. And maybe it may take time, six months, but we will definitely have a huge pool of resource and powerful data with us. And will help us to solve a lot. I love, I love this idea of having a separate page where businesses can register and say what industry they're in is it hotel is it tourism is it you yes. know, restaurants whatever um and the associations in the country and the language group i i think it's it's a, a brilliant idea i really like um and and it's about going back to you know that part of this is you know woulda coulda shoulda that we wish that we could have done this during the covid time but you know the the time frame was so short there that we that wouldn't have really been possible to be able to do, but I think if we establish that moving forward, we can better communicate. But then it goes back to the original problem: is how do we communicate this? We can set this amazing website up, but if the if the feeders that feed the information into it aren't aware of it, you know, we've got to be able to identify who those are. And I was going to say, I remember back, I want to say in the spring, we had a rally downtown Lexington when the hate crime against Asians were going on was that this year and we had a large group of people leaders that showed up you know which was the Koreans and the Vietnamese all of those people were there so there are leaders someone's got that communication I would love to see to bring that group of people together even start with five or six different countries or languages and, and try to start gathering information, hopefully the word would spread that, you know, what are the business needs or what are the needs within your people groups um, and start building that story somehow. Um, um, could I add something? Yeah. Yes. All right. Uh, those are great ideas, actually. I was just thinking here and uh, being in higher education, Another area we should focus on in this group is access to higher education. 
And the reason I say that uh, most of the refugee and immigrant populations we have within the Commonwealth of Kentucky and actually the entire nation, but we are focusing here on the Commonwealth, come at different levels, you know. Some of them had to flee even at high school before finishing or after finishing. Some of them midway through college and others of course finished, but maybe left their credentials. So one area, and we've experienced this a lot at our school, and I believe other institutions of higher learning uh, experience this is transcript evaluation. That is an area that has really been an obstacle to a lot of refugees and immigrant populations. And then there's the question of access, because I do know that being Lexington being an, uh, an area where, of course, you know, a lot of immigrants are attracted to, if we don't pay attention to this group in terms of getting them an education to better their lives, that is not only burdensome to their families, but also burdensome to the Commonwealth of Kentucky. So if we can find a way within our work group here and within the mayor's council to be able to maybe create conference type, you know, uh, activities or workshops that target this particular group where we invite people to showcase what they have, the resources they have that these students or prospective students can tap into that would allow them access to some of these institutions of higher learning within the Commonwealth. But not only <clears throat> accessing those, even retention, retaining them in the programs they choose and even after they graduate, then we plug them into what you're calling the workforce, you know, development aspect, you know. Uh, you can only get a job for somebody who is kind of prepared for it, education-wise. You know, they may have the expertise, but they don't have any credentials to, you know, to show for that. So I think we need, as a group, to pay attention to access to higher education, recruitment, and retaining them. And I propose, conference. For the first time, we can organize one and a yearly one where we just do an, uh, workshops and you know, invite people from different institutions uh, to showcase what they have and the resources they can offer this uh, huge group that is actually uh, very important to the Commonwealth of Kentucky. Um, I appreciate that. Um, I think that's one of the things when, when we started and we talked about brainstorming, what are some of the, what are some of the um, difficulties that we're facing, you know, so I hadn't thought about the education component of it. It's huge. Of people, it, it is. Yeah. Um, you know, it, I think it ranks there with transportation, visas, um, and then education. I think those are three top ones that, that you know that we can we can look at and see how do how do how do we do that? Um, I do know that one of the things that we've worked on in the past um, on the education side, and I think that looking at the needs of different companies that need workers, you know, I know there's a lot of memorandum of understandings between countries and between states and even maybe among businesses and other industries of saying, you may not have your certification, but we understand that you are a civil engineer, you know, let's figure out a way that we can um, get that accredited so that you can come work for us, you know. Um, so I think there's, there's, there's avenues that we need to look at. So I think under the education component, and maybe under this, because this is such a large undertaking, that we kind of divide this up. You know that you may you may be uh, a subcommittee that 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 kind of takes the education component and runs. Sure, through. absolutely. Then, you know, we have one that does the visas or ones mm -hmm. that you know trying to gather that information. And I don't know if there's any COVID money out there that I don't know if it's too late for us to go. We've, I know that workforce development is a big area, and I don't know if there's an allotment that the city's looking at of, of using their COVID funds for workforce development, but we could go soon, and I think that we could put together a proposal, a recommendation of saying, okay, workforce development is serious, here is the, the lack of workers, and we've got this large pool of workers to pull from, you know, Let's get some support so that we can plug these people to fill this into it. Um, uh, 
I have another question. Uh, mm -hmm. You can finish after I have a question. No, I'm finished. Go ahead. Oh, uh, only one thing. Uh, I don't know if there is uh, if there is kind of connection or there is some kind of communication between the immigration office in Louisville and the Lexington City administration. I don't know if there is some connection or there is some way to have some information from them. I think the immigration office is the best one can give information about to obtain a visa because I know they have all information for all countries in the world. I don't know if this can help. For us, this helps a lot, but I don't know about the city, Lexington, if yeah, they have some you know, uh, primary connection or they can have some information to collect for the people need to obtain this visa or I don't know. Do you know about that? Is there some connection about that? Well, my understanding is um, just like any government entity right now, it is overwhelmingly understaffed and they have to prioritize. Mm -hmm. And from my understanding, in order to get help on those levels, you ought to find somebody that is interested in your case to help you. Other than yeah. that, you're probably screwed, you know. I'm, for example, having a problem with the Internal Revenue Service because some reason my son's social security number got bumped out and he's got two social security numbers and I can't even get anyone to help me figure out what is his social security number, you know, and I was told by the leaders is you got to find somebody that is sympathized with your case before they'll do anything about it. So that's part of the issue that we're having right now. And people are not returning to work. Yeah. So there's a lot of communication that is just so unclear right now that we don't know. Yeah. And it changes. For example, for example um, I always make a visa for the student from Kentucky or, or some country, some state outside Kentucky for students go back to Italy for semester for university. And from, from us to make this kind of visa, even work visa, in our system is much more easy. Here is much more complicated from outside United States and come here. There's a lot of a lot of rules, very restricted about number, about study or something. And even for recognize the, the, the degree or all of this stuff is very complicated. That's very difficult. Because talking about my company, it's the case, and this Italian company bought American company 16 years ago, we had the same problem. I mean, if, if the people is not perfect, regular with visa, we cannot take anybody. And that's a problem also for us. We need people, but if, if, we, can, if, we, can, if we cannot justify their specialized or everything, we are not available to bring them because there is too many restrictions. That's another problem. And I was wondering if, if there is some way the, the administration for, for the city of Lexington has a kind of way to, you know, to make kind of a sponsor for refugees in this way. But I know it's very difficult. I don't want to say impossible. I don't Can know. I say something? Yeah, yes. so, so let me, okay. So I'll just add to the concern that you have shared, Dr. Fabrizio. Uh, from my personal experience, as I have served as the chairman to Indo-American Chamber of Commerce, where one of the main activity, though it was a bilateral chamber to develop the business between India and USA, but a lot of our activities and resources were focused towards the visa issues also. Visas yeah. for students, visas for business people who wants to travel for business purpose. So coming to the first point when you said that how to get more information and how we can get from the Louisville Immigration Office. So as an individual or uh, unless the government to government level, if they ask information, the immigration office would be ready to share a lot of information. But because of the sensitivity of the security purpose and all, they do not open up and share all the information so we have to develop our own ways of getting much more than what we are expecting from the immigration office to share. Now, coming to the visa concerns, I think the best thing to how to solve this matter is 
we can directly definitely get in touch with the immigration office we can write the concerns but as what mr david said like they are under staff and it's not possible to get all the attention that what we want yeah. and as a committee we are also limited with the time and the resources what we have so the larger way we can do is we can take all the chambers uh we can work with the chambers and we can communicate more with the chambers and through the chambers like indo italian chamber indo american chamber indo african chamber we have to take them on our and we have to communicate them because they all have direct contacts with the embassies and the consul generals and they communicate a lot so we can use that channel to pass on the information make them work solve the visa issues and get it more faster that's much more a quicker and faster way of doing it yeah mr sir question yes. yeah. um are you talking about national chambers or are you talking about statewide chambers because i don't know of any local no so we do not i don't even i don't think that every chamber has their presence in kentucky that's not possible uh because most of the chambers are based in larger bigger cities where businesses are much more higher larger bigger cities in short but they would be more than happy to work across the us because when the chamber does not have a presence in particular state they are responsible to solve and work for the rest of the entire us so they would be happy to represent if we have a local presence of any chamber in our state or in the city that's the best thing to work with otherwise most of the chambers would represent the entire region of usa the country so we can use them as a channel partners to pass on information get more data from and work for the visas at least yeah uh, just as a reminder that jerry clark who is a volunteer in the immigration uh committee is uh, an expert in investment visas yes yeah, so visa. he might be a great addition to to this uh committee or just be a liaison with the immigration yeah he is working committee. on eb5 visa type yes i have a a a question for um dr otieno bctc has a new uh i don't know if it's workforce development or but it's but it's an outreach to the international uh community it's Aaron Howard has yeah, a new it's office. global learners yeah global right. learners center and so i know that she's incredibly busy right now because i've invited her before to to um come and tell the the meac uh, about her work but she's very very busy right now but she, i think so, she could be a great addition so here her he, office so here is what what i would even suggest when i was talking of a workshop or conference type you know environment where we bring all these people not only bctc but even eku uk berea all their offices that are working with this type of population and particularly the resources they have if we had all of them coming together yearly you know in a conference type thing and i can organize that with other people we can put all those heads together you know with the students and connect them with the resources that these institutions have and yes bctc has a center now erin howard heads it and so are other institutions of higher learning within the state of kentucky so yes uh, we could even offer our facility for such a conference i know so yes when, I, is, uh, mm -hmm. when i opened um global x um i had a uh, uh talk actually i was invited to talk to the bluegrass higher education consortium which is yes. a consortium of university presidents it's mm -hmm. about eight universities yeah and i was telling them about opening up and they all uh unanimously offered to support our efforts here in lexington to yeah. open a center where uh particularly they were interested in in students getting that cross cultural communication um an experience with our international population. Yeah. But I think that we shouldn't leave them out. I think that it would be great to have um someone speak to them about these issues and and say, you know, some of some of these certifications um that need to happen, they need to speak up at that level or even yeah. higher with the mm -hmm. Kentucky education because 
uh, the education department because um, we've had nuclear engineers here from mm -hmm. Russia that were struggling uh, to be known and to be admitted and to and and then they would leave to another state because it was so hard to recertify or reclassify here in Kentucky. We may have higher uh, levels of education and they're not recognized in Kentucky. And I think that's an issue that should be taken to the, this consortium mm -hmm. of presidents, university presidents. I think they would all be behind it. I believe that. Uh, one good thing, one to note when you talk about that on the education component aspects is, there is the post-secondary education, the Council on Post-Secondary Education. And I serve on the Diversity Equality Board. Um, and every college and university of Kentucky has to have a diversity program and a diversity um, plan. And it has to be approved in order that a university can, can do any new programming. They have to meet the goals of their uh, diversity plan and that and I represent the Asian community part on that but that covers you know African American to um, there's representatives from the Asian um, Hispanic um, kind of like our committee does and we review those plans so I know that there's a communication perhaps that might be a good group that we can reach out to is whoever the diversity lead is in these colleges and universities to be able to gather maybe some of that information because that may be because we've got if we've got students university students that are here that are from these different regions a lot of them are, are they live with their families and that's the communication that we could also have with the family as well so that that's a that's a, an excellent thought of, of reaching out through our international students to get the word or to get the information that we need. We have, all the universities have the statistics. Oh, they do. They're for required students. to have, yeah. They're required to, and because they, they have to maintain it, you know. I, I also so know. We, I have all of that information. I mean, I didn't even think about it. I also, yeah. I also know University of Kentucky has a lot of a kind of priority channel with immigration to help people to have a visa for study or for everything and to make all this country communicate. Because I remember my son uh, was here until last year and he started here in, in, uh, in UK. Now I go back to Italy, but there is, they have a lot of uh, information about, about the way to work with visa, study visa, work visa. They have a lot of, I mean, University of Kentucky is a big, is a big, uh, Institute, they have a lot of information about that. That can be a very good way to work with them. Now, uh, uh, Isabel, if there is something like a conference that I, was, I mentioned earlier, what time of the year do you think it would be so that we can invite people from all these uh, institutions to just bring their ideas so that we share, you know, the, those ideas with the students, you know, we do and the, 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 we can we just talk conference. about what they have, what they offer, how they can help our students. What time of the year would such a, a conference be? Well, don't we have one that we do it, every year? Didn't don't we? Oh, you're talking about the, the refugee summit? Is that the one you're talking about? No, we had at the, it's been at the library and it's an international. That's the refugee summit. Oh, that's yeah. refugee summit. This, yeah. this one, I, I meant a different kind of higher education. Really. Yes. I, I'm, I'm smiling because anytime we want to get uh, uh, higher, higher education people, it can't be during vacations. No, <laughs> it can't be, no, no it can't be in the summer. It can't be no. in the spring. It, so I, I think that the just target a date, either fall or spring, uh, yeah. to have enough time to organize mm -hmm. it. Um, so uh, maybe next year, fall or next year, spring. Okay. Can I add? Yeah. So, Dr. Ida, so if you are considering higher education and if you want the correct information to pass on to the refugee community so that they can plan in advance. Mm -hmm. So to be on time for them, the most of the admissions and the schools or the colleges, whichever they start by the fall, 
and the admission process is normally done at the time of the spring. I know yeah. we are already. I know we are already on the last day of the November. Uh, so anywhere before spring, if we do it, the com the refugee com uh, community and the our target group will get the information that these are the options available. They will be able to apply. So fall is better to... then. So, you, no, so you are fall talking is about the admission time. Fall is the time. So when the spring, college spring conference is better. Spring then. is the right time. So early yeah. the better. So I would say even if we try to do it by Feb end or mid Feb Feb end, that would be the best time because the uh, refugee community have enough time to think over the options available and they can just go ahead and start doing the paperwork because as you say like transcript is a major obstacle for every student if they do not have papers in line then they cannot study so and those things also to coordinate with their countries also take a lot of time and with the pandemic going on there's a lot of delay so i don't know how much time we need for such conference but if we can yeah, figure out this february may be too soon though it could be yeah, this could be yeah. I think it cannot be this this that's what, this yeah. February, but it is something that we can do yearly in the spring going forward. And for me, you know, uh, being in higher education and I've been there for a while, I have contacts with people from these universities, and these are people who would be willing to come and talk about their resources and how they can help this student population. So all we, and again, working at BCTC, that building you see behind me, we could use it as a conference area and I can work with Erin to make this happen, you know? So it is doable. And it is, we have a lot of uh, people already doing great things in different places. A conference would bring us all together, you know? And then the students from this to, uh, these schools can also attend. And then we, we talk about things that are available out there that can be shared across, you know, uh, the Kentucky and Lexington, particularly the region here we serve. So I'm excited about, a, well, somebody's at my door here. Can I just give me a yeah, minute? Your door. Um, so kind of to get back on, on, on track, um, I think we've been successful um, and I'm going to I'm going to email everybody out this kind of this list, but I have documented some of the areas of brainstorming of issues that we're facing with our international community in, in regards to workforces, um, communication, how do we communicate and how do we gather that information. Um, we've already identified that we know transportation is an issue. Um, how do how do how do we do that. Um, the other one that I've I've got down is um, visas and immigration um, concerns. Um, the other one would be language, um, what language concerns that we have or issues, um, and then a big one that we've been talking about is the education component um, of of many areas. There's lots of subcategories underneath that 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 we've talked about of education in regards to. Um, of, of accreditation, of education needs, um, access, you know, access, um, attention, graduation. Yeah. Yes. So I think, and that's a lot. That's a lot for I think for us to get started on in in in, in going. What I'd I'd like for us to do is to think about. I want us to schedule another meeting as soon as we yeah. can. But between now and then. Let's think about who we need to invite to the table in regards to these areas. So I'm gonna send a, I'm gonna send you guys an email later today or in the morning mm -hmm. on these topics. And let's kind of brainstorm offline back and forth. Who is it that we need to bring to the table um, under these areas? Um, and then as a group, let's let's think about it this week and see what how do we prioritize? Honestly, we can't do all of them. We've got to figure out what this committee can do so that we can be successful in one or two of those. And I think what we really also need to do is we need to brainstorm, we need to work on this, but we also need to bring in the support that can help us to do that. And I think working with the mayor in the mayor's office and through Global Lex, 
um, there's resources that we can reach out to see how we can get support on some of these things. Does that make sense? Yeah. yeah. So, uh, uh, Mr. David, can I just suggest one more thing? Yes. Uh, as you said, like, yeah, we have too many things on our table to work on and brainstorming is minimum requirement to move ahead. We need a roadmap how we are going to solve it. Uh, once we get the email from you, I'm sure that all the members on the committee would start reflecting back with their thoughts. Then either we need one person who can compile and bring everything to one file so that whatever information and the thoughts that are shared on the email are compiled and we can always go back and start reviewing what is to be done. That's one way of doing it. Second way, if you want to avoid too much of labor work in just making all the emails together. One suggestion is like, maybe we can just create a Google doc or something and share a link and then we have section in it. So whoever wants to add something, your thoughts, the ways, suggestions, uh, important people, any chambers or important contacts who can work for it. Everyone goes in that Google doc and just starts writing in it so that everyone have an easy common access and that works as a common file we can always have more number of files as for new topics, but one, we can start building up a database. So that's going to work for us in a longer way. I mean, like we'll have a compiled data with less efforts. You know, how Sir, to um, the, if you all have <laughs> taken a look at the immigration commission's uh, document, it is, it is um, a Google document and um, there's something like seven to 14 attorneys. I don't know who's left and who's still on, but there's different areas of specialty, as you know, and each section is there with uh, the main topic, with updates, with and, and the dates of the updates. And so anybody can go in and look at it and, and uh, specific people update their areas um, periodically so that the chair can compile the reports, the quarterly reports, very easily from that document. Uh, so, so if you want to take a look at that, I think Marilyn can, can uh, uh, give you access to it. I have access to it, but I think she needs to uh, give everyone access. So you can see um, it's, it's pretty easy to yeah. uh, read. It's pretty easy to look at the different sections and because there's, there's it's, it's a pretty complex area. Uh, immigration law is like tax law. It's so complex. And each area may have case law. It may have administrative law. It may have policy. It may have you know, congressional uh, legislative changes. And so it's so easy. It's not necessarily what a layman can, can read, but I think it's a great um, model. Uh, and my intern uh, last year set it up for them. I can ask him, I can go back to him. He's a UK student. Um, we can ask him to set it up if you want. Uh, and then everybody fill in their areas once uh, the group decides on those different things. I have one last question. And that is on, um, Kaiser, you had the recommendation to have a special page. Yes. Um, what I propose to do is to set something out with, with you all's um, uh, approval is just to send something of what that special page would ask people to, to register their businesses if they're foreign owned or foreign sourced or um, you know, foreign language speaking, whatever. Um, and then have the different questions. Uh, I'll have one of our um, interns uh, set something up and then forward it to you, David, and to everyone here uh, to, to modify it, to change it, to add to it. Um, how's that? Just to get started on that one, that sounds one area really I think might be idea. easy. Sounds, okay. yeah, sounds like a plan. Is, a, is that something that you think that the communication side? Um, I, I have to admit, I have an assistant that does all my Google Docs and sets all that stuff up because I don't know how to do that. Uh, is that something that you might be interested in kind of overseeing or supporting or helping? That page? Yeah. Absolutely, yes. Global X and, and our interns and our different staff members. I'll get Trina Brown, who's our new administrative assistant, 
to help with that, yes. Okay. Isabel, I have a question. Uh, with regards to a conference, do you think there would be some money uh, to help with it at all? Um, I'd have to ask, or I'd have to put some in my next year's budget. And the reason uh, I'm saying that is that I know BCTC, I, I know we can host a conference, but you know, that could be a huge conference and uh, some assistance would not be bad at all. And I'm not talking of a lot of money, you know, but just some, I don't know. I, I think a that's budgeting. something that we could get um, Commerce Lexington to put out to the different um, uh, companies, okay. uh, the banks, uh, Chase Bank, Central Bank, et cetera. I think that the money would be more available, but we need to ask for it at least a year in advance. Another thing I wanted to uh, bring up, uh, I know we talked of uh, February being too soon and it is true, but again, spring 2023 is too far, you know, so something to start with in the fall is not a bad idea. So Dr. Ida, I, let me again, uh, so I agree fall is a good time and yeah. being a, again, like just putting a, a, another same reference of Indo-American where I've worked with a lot of universities coming and trying to pass on the information to the uh, prospective students uh, sector. So most of the fall admissions uh, are done during the year end time. So December, November to Feb, March is the time when all the admissions are processed. So if we can give the information to the students or the refugee uh, community by August, September, October, that would be really great time. Because yeah, so a will... fall conference is not bad. Yeah, so case. yeah, so as Mrs. Isabel said that avoid the vacation period. So let's yeah. avoid vacation August. So even if we can do it September, October, still okay, the okay. students will have some, at least a month or two to coordinate with their respective country to get the transcripts, prepare the papers, work for maybe entrance or prerequisites, whichever is required, something. Good and then go ahead and apply to options available in the colleges, schools, everywhere, institutes. So tentatively, tentatively fall of 2022, tentatively. Yes. Yeah. Around and we October. have enough time to prepare. We have around enough time October, to prepare. Before, before it gets too cold, yes. you know, and all that. Yeah, that, that is, I'm excited about that. I think that is doable. A yeah. conference is doable. You ask people to come, showcase what they have, in their various institutions, invite students to participate, you know, and see what they can gain out of it, you know. And then we have all these wonderful people with wonderful ideas and resources in one place, showing. I think that's a great idea. Mm -hmm. um, um, let's um, look at our calendar and see, um, you know, now that we've got a good discussion going, um, are you guys open to, to meet again for the next, maybe like once a week? Um, <laughs> once a week is, is too frequent. <laughs> it's grading season for some of us. We have okay, to do, okay. no, and that's we have to do kind of end of semester go, grades. But yeah. as a group, you know, I'd, I'd like for us to, you know, I don't know if you guys are available next, um, on the 6th, again, next week to kind of have like part two of this meeting and then kind of, brainstorm a little bit more and and I will have some of our suggestions digested and, and kind of put together to see what directions that we need to go um, or we could do in two weeks on the 13th um, this the maybe December 6th or December 13th what are, what are your guys' thoughts we, we can do the Just, 6th and then we do monthly afterwards I think oh. Okay, I would suggest this way, my suggestion. We can do sixth because we need to push a little bit faster. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Ida, what I suggest is because we are in, still in the startup phase for our committee and we have a lot to achieve right now, mm -hmm. for initial couple of months, let's just do it by a weekly, like twice, at least every twice a two month, weeks. Okay, every two weeks. Month. And then once we have achieved a nice platform where we, we are well in shape, then we can move to monthly. 
So okay. let's do it on six, and then maybe if available, everyone we can do it on twentieth. Just going uh, on the before the Christmas break, we can do it on twentieth December, and then we can plan accordingly the dates for January later on. Or we can just do it like the first and the third of every month, Monday. Okay. Same time eleven. That's correct. Same time as eleven. Same time as eleven. Yeah. So we meet yeah. next is on sixth, and then we meet again on twentieth of December. Okay. Six at eleven. Oh, I'm excited about this group. And then <laughs> on so the sixth, and then you said the twentieth. Yeah. And then Isabel, I'm not sure. Uh, how do we set up the Zoom meeting? Will they send me a link again, or do I need to? We'll, to we'll just ask uh, Melissa to set it up for us. Okay. Yeah. Um, the 20th may not be available because there's so much happening on the 20th uh, oh. for a Zoom link, but we can always find a different um, Zoom. I have Zoom. If, okay. Yeah, I, even, I don't know if we're yeah. allowed to use private or yes. personal ones or not. Yes, uh, Hua Jean used to use uh, UKs all the time. Okay. Yeah. So you're then I can use the UK one. It's also private, secure, and I also have a UK Zoom link. So even I can use that. Yeah. I don't offer uh, Global Lexes because they keep cutting us off to very short time frames, and it's very annoying, so. Yeah, okay, good. So, meanwhile, Ms. Isabel, if you can share the link of that uh, Google Doc that you mentioned about, which has, so we all can study and we can also create a parallel, similar type of document for I'll our ask, committee. We'll I'll, keep ask, adding I'll be happy to ask uh, Marilyn to send you the link. Yeah. Um, and Isabel, do you recommend that the information and stuff that we send out, should we go ahead and send that to the whole committee, to the whole commission, or just people that we know that's involved, that want to be involved? I, I would just send it at least to the, the co-chairs uh, and, and to this, group because you you will be providing a report to everyone okay mr Sibyl, do we have any particular guidelines defined in the past for this committee like the criteria the guidelines the any any information that talks about this particular committee uh it will be helpful for me to just study the prospects and the rules or whatever it is anything what is what we have is the bylaws and they're, they're on purpose, they're fairly broad and general so that people have the flexibility to create what works for them. What I could also do, David, if, if you think it's a good idea is to send a few of the minutes of our earlier uh, meetings because we had people from uh, UK's Gatton College, uh, we had people from SBA, we had people from Commerce Lexington. So it was a pretty uh, strong group. And the, the only thing that we were focusing on was trying to get that data, that database. And we, uh, David was, was just tremendous in, in bringing that out. And then uh, New Americans came out in 2017 with a pretty good immigrant economic um, uh, view of Kentucky and, and Lexington was in there. So we were able to distribute that information. Mm -hmm. But remember, David, we were doing at Global X with one of our interns. And the funny part is he ended up going to uh, Senator McConnell's office from oh, Global really? X. Yeah. Um, and this intern was doing a study of uh, of immigrants in Fayette County um, and the taxes that they pay. Wow. And so he compared local people's taxes with immigrants' taxes. And what he found was very interesting because the uh, on the low end of the spectrum, the entry level of, of uh, income, they paid slightly higher taxes than the local people. I'm and then on the higher end of the spectrum, also it was true that the higher end of the spectrum, immigrants paid slightly higher than local people. I can so tell we you. had just I'm not surprised. gotten in there. I'm not so, we've been saying that all along. I'm glad somebody, I'm glad somebody did a study on that. Yeah. <laughs> For real. It's it's the truth. It is the truth. <laughs> so there's there's a, a lot more information we need to get. 
um, and the Commerce Department has some information. David, do you have access to their data? Of which group? The Commerce Department, the State Commerce Department. If I do, it would be through the chamber here, the state chamber, and I'm through the workforce development. And that's one group that I'm trying to bring in on this um, because they are, you know, I have reminded them over and over and over about the international community. Um, so um, that's one I'm wanting to bring to the table. So I think we might be able to get some of that. Uh, just to finish on my end, uh, I did send out a, a report that I got from the council on all of the ARPA money. The ARPA money is the American uh, Recovery Act money uh, that you were asking about, David. And there are very few uh, workforce development, direct workforce development dollars. There's some for agriculture, there's some for um, the, the distillery, um, but there, I haven't seen but I can get um, the mayor's office to give me a little compilation of what's happening with workforce development in, in Lexington. Is that for the Lexington budget or for the state budget? That's the, that's the question, is, is that uh, we need to see the source of funding for all of those workforce development. Uh, I can get the state one. I don't okay. Think. Okay, uh, I'll try and get the, the local. Yeah. Because I know that that um, Commerce Lexington has again been given uh, a project, and uh, so I'm I'm not very um, optimistic as to how they're going to manage to get that to the international population. So, uh, Isabel, with regards to October of 2023, no, no, 2022. If you can throw some dates my way so that when I'm conversing about these things, I have something, not just saying the month of October. That is too open and, you know, people are very busy in higher ed. So some dates to work with would really help in uh, these types of conversations okay. and preparation. And especially if I have to get speakers from different colleges, UK, BCTC, EKU, Moorhead, Berea, you know, Transi, you give them time. And I have a feeling we're going to need to have a virtual backup plan. Oh. Oh, I really wanted, you know what, for this type of conference, face to face is the best. Yeah. I know there would be a backup, yes. Yeah, I agree. I agree with you. But especially for 2022, you are right. We'd have to have a Zoom backup plan. Oh, I'd not thought of that. <laughs> Which makes me think maybe, you, you think 2023 may be the, the, the year then, the magical year for a face-to-face. -face. I'd love face-to-face -face conference for this type of thing because of the, the, the group we serve, you know, that particular group, and I'm not saying other groups don't have challenges, it would be better to have them face to face dealing with people who have some of these resources that they can tap into. I'm just saying, yeah. Um, okay, so um, our time is over, um, so um, I got another meeting I've got to run to. Um, right. So let's let's pick this back up. We'll make some notes. Um, and um, I will, I'll, I'll probably send them out to you, um, Kaiser son. Um, and then um, you can review and then we can send them out as a, as, as, sure. a, as a team. So if there's anything sure. we've missed and talk, so. Okay, well. Everybody, I appreciate your time and your energy and Thank your you. ideas, and um, we'll talk real soon. Thank you for getting us together. Thank yes. Thank yes. you, everyone. Okay. All right. Bye-bye. Okay. Have a nice week ahead. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.